What is up? What is going on? And welcome to another exciting episode of Driven to Draw, where we teach folks like yourself about being creative, how to be creative, and visual problem solving. Today's episode is going to be about product design and doing a product design analysis on a computer mouse. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be talking about product design this time, and we're going to be talking about, uh, in particular, mice uh, that we use for the computer. Logitech uh, is what you see right here on this particular picture. It's it's actually Logitech is is one of my favorites. I really like, I really do enjoy uh, their designs, and uh, you're really at a stage where you could literally get so much information when you're designing a product it's really important to kind of understand the overall functionality and the needs of the person the the the, the user that's going to be buying the product and what their needs are and what their particular uh, tastes are uh, as far as how the mouse is supposed to function how it feels around your hands your thumb, where do you rest your thumb? Most companies, design companies, they'll do a lot of research. They'll have uh, clinics and they'll have trials. They'll build models. Uh, it, it is such an extensive process that it's not just about creating a cool sketch because the sketch doesn't give you the whole picture. It doesn't give you, it is just a start to kind of start to theme out what it is that the designer is looking for as an overall shape but it starts to materialize only when you start to build models so even when you build CAD your CAD uh, CAD is never going to show you everything it's going to show you a, a general volume of the shape and you'll start to replicate the shape from the sketches but it isn't until you start to build an actual model and you start to work with that model feel the model and start to interact with it do you find what the mistakes are but we're gonna just talk about uh, not any of that right now what we're gonna do is just sort of just break down the aesthetic right here just to break down what Logitech has done and why I think it's just my opinion why I think it's it's a really a beautiful product here and so one of the things that I noticed right away and I'm just going to start to, to mark up this is let's just look at some of the transitions here we've got uh, we've got a, a slight elevation here and uh, you've got a section here that has a gradual change in form and shift and from from here you've got a nice subtle radius and it's really subtle it's really subtle it's not very harsh it's got a very nice gradual transition which is really nice and then it goes from here to the area where you rest your thumb your so your thumb is going to end up being around here and by the way this is going to be my lame attempt at drawing a <laughs> thumb but bear with me Okay, so when the designer or when you're starting to to look at the positioning of your thumb where it rests, all these other things, I'm just going to delete uh, what I just drew here. Let me just erase it. Okay, going back to this. So the designer who is designing this stuff has to really keep in mind what this shape and what this contour is doing. This becomes, from the sketching standpoint, you may have a preliminary idea, but you're really not going to know how well this feels until you build the model, which is a physical prototype of some sort after you maybe uh, volumize it in, in CAD. But all these things have a purpose and I think the, the other really nice thing is that it's not just about the form but uh, one of the other things that you got to think of is uh, let's just say number one you've got you got your form okay you got functionality
and then you've got materials okay and these all sort of work together uh, when you're designing a, a product so let's just talk about the we just was briefly talking about the functionality we've got uh, you've got your wheel here right I'm just gonna call this a oops this is a scrolling wheel okay and then you've got your two buttons And this is what's really interesting because part of the part of the functionality of this is to ensure that you have a really nice tactical feel which is coming down to the material the type of material that you're using so there's a nice part breakup between the plastic and the rubberized material here so this is rubber material which is necessary as they've seen that instead of having a complete plastic material this rubberized material serves the purpose of giving a sort of a grip and a stickiness and a tactical feel while you're sort of moving the mouse back and forth so your thumb doesn't slip off or anything like that another thing that you can look at too is that if you look close enough whoa there we go if you look close enough you can see the patterning so there's a sort of a, a patterning right here you see all these little little dots here and that also serves those tiny little elevations in the dots also serve the purpose of being able to grip the surface so there's so many things that sort of go into uh, designing a product it's not just about the drawing it's not just about the aesthetic uh, or or just about the shape everything has a functional purpose this the shape here like we were talking about before talking about before has a functional purpose to be shaped like this to have this crease from here and then transitioning off to uh, the radius here there's a purpose because your index finger is going to lay on here and this contour this concavity that you see here is going to help or, or have this pleasant feel of your finger uh, of your index finger sort of laying or resting into that particular surface so as you can see it's all very important to have a cross-functional team you need your engineers you need your model makers you need your designers they all sort of come together to make this product successful and what I want you to pay attention to, or at least to understand when you're looking at this, is just, just look at the relationship of these two surfaces. So when you look at those two parts, even the parting, or, or you just the gaps, just assessing the gaps between the two is pretty tiny. It's really minimal. So that also helps to sort of analyze the, the quality factor or the perceived quality factor of a product. Typically when you have inconsistent gaps between two mating surfaces or two mating parts, it's not seen as a very high quality product. Or if you see a lot of, uh, I don't know, let's say um, uh, your parting lines and you have uh, just the rough edges from the parting lines that need to be shaved off or uh, you do see that products that that come uh, that are that are pretty cheap. You you can readily see the visible parting lines and the flash. That's what you call uh, the the material that's around the parting line is the flash. And if that's not trimmed off or you don't have a really nice uh, part, the perceived quality or I would say the quality is actually pretty poor. So when you look at at this at just the separation of those two materials what you're going to find is that the quality and just the control between the two parts are really pretty high but the designers intent is to make sure that you know what I want to see my product or this product I'm designing this is what people are expecting we don't want to have one millimeter gaps here we don't want to have a, a half a millimeter half a millimeter gap 
we want like a 0 0.005 millimeter gap. <laughs> so you have to have processes in place to be able to execute those things. So that is pretty much on the analysis part. Let's take this and start to sketch something out of it. All right, so I'm going to start off with a plan view here. This is sped up, sorry. <laughs> it's about twice as fast as I typically sketch. Uh, but what I'm going to do is start with the centerline section, and I just draw an egg shape. Pretty simple. Just start off with a very basic shape and, and then start to form it, uh, just looking at any reference material that you want. Now, I'm looking at the mouse that I had just taken a picture of the Logitech, but I'm just going to change the shape a little bit too. So I'm going to start adding my curves and I'm just using a big ballpoint just in case uh, you guys are interested in knowing what I'm sketching with. You don't have to buy a lot of expensive materials or anything, especially if you're just trying to ideate and just draw. So don't worry about all that stuff, just get started. And I'm just going to start to jar darken my lines a little bit and, and start to pull in some form. So places where I have like a horizontal line or something, I, I sort of measure off the horizontal line and say, okay, I want to add some more curvature here. And I've got that area with the grip. And this is, again, a key to your observation. You sort of have to observe a lot of these things on your own and get used to uh, the form language. Look at the shapes and look at them in different, uh, look at them in different views, whether you're looking at a top view and the side view, and start to analyze what do they do when they start to change the angle or something like that. When you start to change the the form I'm just going to draw my cut line to where the wheel is going to go the scrolling wheel that is and notice how I'm describing the concavity is I start drawing the section very very important to draw your sections in because it's your section that's going to describe the form at that particular location and as you want to transition that, you can change the section. You can say, well, uh, maybe I have this crease, but the crease starts to fade out. So you may have that slight depression right to where that wheel is for the mouse. And then you start to fade it out because you're not going to want to continue it. So you have to, to understand what's that transition look like? What is it going to do when it fades out? Here we go. And then I'm just going to take very, just a quick line drawing, and then I'll end up rendering this thing up. And unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't film myself rendering it. Um, so I'm going to apologize for that, but I'll post the picture. I'm just going to go back, and then you just pop the silhouette out. I was off on my curve there, so that's another thing. I get to my background, and I sort of trim out the, the shape that I kind of extended a little too much. There you go, right? So that's simple. It's simple and uh, it describes the form form ex um, describes the form effectively by popping it out with the silhouette like background or or accentuating the silhouette with the background. And then I just go through it with another passive marker. I'm using hammer mill laser paper. So I'm not using marker paper at all. Laser paper is really good. It is kind of a coated surface, but it can leak to the back, by the way. It, at least it doesn't bleed. Now we're going to go with a three-quarter view. So the three-quarter view, again, I just start with an egg shape. And then I, you know, because I've, I've been working with perspective for a while, some of the stuff is not as difficult. I can understand where it'll be difficult for someone that's just starting. But just look at the technique. We want to start simple, simple shapes, and just one swoop of your, your pen. That's where you get the control by practicing curves and lines and the things that we typically don't like to do. That's what's going to give you precision accuracy. So just see how I start to throw in my, I just draw my lines through 
and then I start adding the sections in each one of those locations. I love doing this. I love to draw those sections in. I love showing my construction lines because one, it just validates the surface or the form that I want to take. And two, it's just cool. <laughs> it's just it's just a constant reminder as you are drawing that <coughs> the geometry has to be described by these by these sections. And here I'm just estimating a wheel. I don't think the perspective is quite correct on it, but we just want to dry, uh, draw in the the scrolling wheel. Use for your index finger. And again, all this stuff is is about just practicing. You're you're not. You don't even have to design anything. I I think really the the point of these exercises is to familiarize yourself with the form and whether you can kind of replicate it and then change some things and that's all I've done here I'm just changing the original form now I'm just gonna again add my background so if people are asking you know what are those straight lines practicing straight lines what are they for this is Here's one reason you have it. I, it's just I just enjoy the I just enjoy challenging myself. And if you're a product designer out there, and there's nothing like just trying to improve your skills and and just trying to invest in yourself into practicing and and making sure that you're upping your level every step of the way. It's it's really important to to continuously improve. I mean, what else are you gonna do, really? I mean, if you want to excel and you want to get better at something, and uh, especially if you want to excel at work or whatever it is, then this is what you do. You you go in, and once you graduate from college and you learn more, uh, as you get into industry, you learn more. You learn to be a little bit more technical. You learn to be a little bit more artistic. It's all about growing. There's nothing wrong with growing. It's a necessity. And by growing, you make yourself more competitive out there in the market. Uh, that's what it's all about is improving yourself so I hope you enjoyed this particular uh, tutorial and we'll see you next time on driven to draw have a good one guys so if you're enjoying all the content you're seeing so far and you want to learn more about creativity being creative then be sure to subscribe subscribe take it learn create click on it subscribe do it now click on it click so what are you waiting for subscribe I tried I tried subscribe